Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. It is Let's go! Let's go! Let the Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you gotta get the coffins in. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night to one and all. Vic, good to see you there in the chat. I hope you're ready to fire up for some great AEW action. We got three hours of wrestling tonight, so this should be a lot of fun. Uh, I do believe our main event tonight is going to be, well, our main event of the first show is going to be the debut of the MXM collection taken on FTR. And uh, main event of the Battle of the Belts tonight should be the ROH 6 man tag team titles with the uh, Undisputed Kingdom taking on Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erichs. So we're, we're in for some good wrestling tonight. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're doing well, Vic, here in the chat. Hope everybody's doing li great, whether you're watching live, whether you're checking out the YouTube, which... I find it amazing that a lot of people checking things out on YouTube lately uh, under the uh, replay. So might have to see if there's some way that I can actually dual stream this over to YouTube as well, just to see that might be uh, an option here going forward. But we'll see. Well, taking time, take plans. I'm busy enough trying to get new overlays done here as we're trying to get away from the uh, copper and blue here. And then, you know, a little earlier than I expected, so... It is just a little piece at a time. I am working on it after streams and whatnot. So, but yeah, we're, we got some great action coming up here tonight. Enough with the BS that's been going on here. I see that, uh, the latest in the, uh, X world trying to take over wrestling once again, uh, Zoe Stark, uh, and CM Punk were at San Diego comic-con and, uh, CM Punk put his hand over Zoe's shoulder and all of a sudden everybody's, oh, what is he doing? He's married. How dare he do that? And it's like, you idiot. I, I think that pretty much sums it up perfectly for everybody on the internet that's making a comment about this. It just, people is so stupid. I, I think that's the easiest way to explain it for a lot of things these days. I know up here in Canada, sports wise, we got huge controversies. We got a we got a coach that got uh, sent home. Now she's been banned a year, and the Canadian team's been docked basically two wins uh, in a three game tournament uh, for uh, the women's uh, Olympics for soccer right now. So they uh, bas basically uh, the. The women's coach was caught with a uh, with one of their assistants taking a drone into the other team's game, which or the other team's close practice. Which, if you're an NFL fan, that sounds eerily familiar to something else that we've seen. But it, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a real confusing situation, real angering situation. Being that I'm from Canada and it involves us, there ain't much I could say about it. As we are kicking into collision right now, the show is on live. I know that a lot of people are upset about the new intro for uh, collision, that it's no longer Elton John anymore, but realistically, for the amount of people that are watching the show... It doesn't justify having Elton paying the royalties for the Elton John song every single time. For a very special one, maybe, but not every time. Oh, we got orange right off the bat. All right, I can. This gonna be fun. The conglomerate is all over this card tonight. Interesting that they have a different uh, ring announcer 
Aura 80 or I, I, I apologize for screwing up the name. I'm not 100% an expert on everything as you know, a lot of people think. Ah, oh, yes, the battle for the booty at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, it's been amazing seeing the wrestling integration, the fighting game integration, the video game integration in general at San Diego Comic-Con this week. More often than not, you do see uh, Comic-Cons don't really match up with video games, but this year just feels different. We got the new Mortal Kombat trailer yesterday. I'll be honest, I, I'm going to look forward to it, but at the same time, I'll be looking at it more for the uh, for the new story that's coming out here. So that's going to be a fun week because it releases two days before my birthday and the first day of my vacation. Taya's going to have to do a quick outfit change. I hope she's not wrestling in that tonight. John, Johnny put in a hell of an effort and a, an absolute great job uh, in the uh, six-way survival match for the TV title last night at ROH uh, Death Before Dishonor. I did end up watching the whole... Well, I missed part of the pre-show, but I got most of the main show. To, well, I, got, I had the main show on in the background here. I had some, a couple things to do, but... I will say that that Death Before Dishonor card, if you haven't had a chance to watch it, do yourself a favor, get Honor Club and check it out. It is actually just on their streaming service, so it's not like a, a $40 pay-per-view to pick up. And frankly, I pick up Honor Club mainly for the, the pay-per-views, which I guess they're technically PLEs because they're not extra but 10 bucks for our for uh for ring of honor when you have to pay like they have pay-per-views every three months or so basically you're paying the same amount as a regular pay-per-view so it makes a lot of sense but yeah just a quick note as we get into this here there is going to be no WWE 2K24 uh, after the after wrestling this week. When we're doing three hours this week, and then we're doing four four hours next week with uh, SummerSlam and Collision, the dual sidecast. Once those are done, we're going to wrap up right after. Uh, but I did record two episodes of WWE 2K24 My GM Mode. Uh, they will be up on the YouTube on normal times. Uh, episode 6 has already gone up. Episode 7 will be up on Tuesday. What in the world is Johnny doing? A little bit, a little bit of whirling dervish into the corner and Orange is looking at this as like, really? Oh, wow. Stealing the glass is not exactly one of the best things to do here. Uh-oh. Johnny TV is in trouble. The hands in the pocket are never a good thing. Nice little monkey flip and it takes... Alright, it, it does feel like this match is a little bit slower than expected. Cause they got they got a ton of shows coming up here, ten, or a ton of matches coming on tonight. I know one of the big ones I'm looking forward to is Leo Rush versus Pac. Still heads in the pockets after the dive. Jesus, let me pull up the full card here so I can 
Beast Mortos, who is now going viral now with his latest post-match interview. With Lexinger, is going to be taking on Hologram, which that should be a great match because both those guys are regular AAA guys. Leo Rush and Pack. Maya World taking on Thunder Rosa. I haven't heard of Maya, Maya World, but it's going to be fun. Oh, and here we go. Now they're starting to get everything on the screen. The rest of the conglomeration taking on the premier athletes. So that's probably going to be more of a squash than anything, really. And then our, yeah, our main event tonight, the MXM Collection versus FTR, a match that we could have saw quite easily on Raw earlier, but... Hey, Mr. McG, how are you doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the life, the times, the the howdy duties and holy moly's of uh, you know how the world is treating you today. I'm doing okay. You know it. It's that uh, 32 hour shift that I had, and then just getting ready for stream here tonight. It it is a lot more relaxing than usual. All right, that that was interesting. Just having a straight little push like that. No, uh, things are going well. Working on a new uh, new stream layout for a few things. Uh, this one might not change a whole lot. Just trying to clean it up a little bit and get rid of a few things and add a few things and trying to make things look pretty around here. Plus, once again, trying to get rid of. Uh, the copper and blue theme that's on there right now. I love that the kid has a sign slam here. I really wonder if Johnny TV thinks it hurts more when you take the little, little carpet off there. The little covering. Okay. That makes a little more sense. All right. I'll give him that. Can't put your hands in your pockets if you're too busy holding it. So Taya's going to be busy. She ends up getting a shot with uh, Timeless Tony Storm later tonight as part of Battle of the Belts. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get three good matches here uh, for Battle of the Belts. We got Deanna Peraza. Wait, wait a second. Moriarty and Cage versus BCC versus Top Flight. Um, not scheduled, but yes. Oh, yeah. Like I was saying, McG, if you get a chance, pick up your Honor Club uh, subscription and check out uh, Death. Death Before Dishonor from last night. Absolutely fantastic card. That match between Lee Moriarty and Wheeler Yuta for the Pure Championship. Just absolutely insane. And you want to go from one drastic to the other. The match right before it, a Texas death match between uh, Diamante and Layla Hirsch. Where they literally threw every hardcore bit out. I don't know if you've seen some of the viral stuff that's come out of it. I don't want to I don't want to spoil too much for you if you haven't seen it yet, but Rolling neckbreaker off the rope, that's ingenious. But yeah, if if you get a chance like every match on the card seemed like it went really well. Need to invest in Honor Club. 
the biggest reason I do right now is I have some friends that work ROH quite often. And also the fact uh, the Cost of Honor Club basically makes up for any any pay-per-view that they have coming up, right? Because like they'll throw a, a pay-per-view type show every three months. Three or four months. And it's $10 a month, so you just... It's $40 one way or the other, right? So I would I would totally suggest doing it. They got all the old R ROHs on there too. It, it's going to be interesting also the fact when they get this uh, streaming deal done, what happens to Honor Club? Where they keep it where it is or... There is some talk of uh, basically Rampage disappearing and ROH taking its place. Which really wouldn't be the worst thing in the world right now. But they are also looking at keeping these ROH tapings separate on separate days. Ah... Uh, I don't know how much of a rename it is. It's pretty much what the, what are they calling it? AEW ROH. He won't he won't uh, he won't do much more than that, and I don't think anybody's really going to notice. It's sort of the same way that if you go back uh, to the early two thousands, the original name for TNA wrestling was NWA TNA. But how many people actually remember the NWA part as the official name? The NWA title was involved. All right, only a two count. There's a lot of things TK says, and I would take him with about 15 pounds of salt, not just uh, a grain of salt. Because the other thing you also have to remember is anybody, anytime anybody says anything on those press conferences, they will cut them down into clips. I'm surprised they're not chopped down to like cutting stuff out in the middle. Orange Cassidy dealer other breaks his hand with the orange punch and then wins. I think TK says everything out loud that thinks about me. You know what? I do a lot of that too, so I don't blame him. Like, I think it's honestly, it's a little refreshing. The fact that he says, he says what's on his mind and you know what? Sometimes it doesn't work out. It's fine. Now, there's going to be no Dalton Castle coming out for the save. But there will be a Willow Nightingale. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. First, they're also looking to uh, team up together uh, to take on uh, Trent and uh, Statlander. The former half of the best friends. Dalton should always be on your TV. Unfortunately, due to the concussion he got against Roderick Strong, it was announced that he isn't going to be back until next year. So it really does suck, but... I will... You know what? It's just going to make it better so he j but he comes later. Yes, I know that sounds horrible when I say it that way, without any context. But yeah, we're going to get, uh, I, I do like how they did break up the titles and just, they didn't have to come out here and say this big spiel on this, right? Anytime a concussion's involved, take your freaking time. Yeah. Like I'm assuming that because this is a repeat concussion, he's out for a minimum of six months. That might be why they say it the way they did.
conniving Hellcat. He said dodge twice. Are they going full, full face? Okay. I do like the fact that they are focusing on a more non-established wrestlers on collision here. I, I know they don't have, they're not getting the ratings that they think that, you know, everybody thinks they should. It is all relative, of course, but, and, and I'll get into that in a second here, but the fact that they, they can use this as a stepping up point to a lot of, for a lot of wrestlers to get the exposure and then when they're thrown over to dynamite they're a little bit more established i don't mind that one bit and also you get a feeling on this show that it's a little more wrestling centric compared to what you see on dynamite there's a lot more i wouldn't say a lot more promos but a fair number of promos involved and a lot of things going straight to the point but this seems just perfect for for Claudio and for guys like Cla Claudio and Wheeler, we're just out here want to wrestle, have some fun, right? I I feel that it was a very disappointing moment yesterday when Brian Cage came out with this gear. The fact that Deadpool and Wolverine debuted yesterday and the fact he wasn't wearing his Wolverine gear, I, I was I was a little disappointed. You know, Red Velvet and uh, Billy Starks actually came out in their... Uh, in Deadpool and, uh, and Wolverine, respectively. So it actually did look really good what they did. Like... Billy's gear's never been a full body suit or anything, but what she had on was just, it had very Deadpool vibes to it. And Red Velvet was pretty much wearing the, the full orange through the, the for it, so. See, Mox is finally taking something. Yeah, it was sort of obvious that after he lost the G1 title, he was going to get that time off he wanted. And re realistically, he can afford it, like, and, and here's the other thing that I really appreciate right now. The fact that AEW can afford it. Because realistically, they're they're humming right now. You got, you got uh, major teams going on here. You got major singles wrestlers all, all over the place. I really wish these guys would figure out whether they're going to be a trio or a tag. I guess you could work both either way, but at the same time, I really would like to see see Top, Fl Top Flight and Andretti just get that trio's run and just go. So I'm assuming that... Uh, Lee Moriarty's partner was supposed to be Shane Taylor tonight, but unfortunately Taylor, I believe injured his shoulder in the uh, survival of the fittest match for the TV title. He was the first man out. Then just literally rolled out of the ring and got taken out by two doctors. I really do hope he's okay. 
I, I do love his response on socials when people were asking about it. He's like, yeah, unlike you guys, I'm tough enough to handle this and I, I'm tough enough to, to gut it out at least, not like some of you cowards. But Brian Cage, the Mr. Utility here, getting to take on that take on that position of being a teammate for Lee Moriarty here. I don't know if you want Anthony Agogo in here when it's gonna be as chaotic as it's gonna be here, so it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, that match between Wheeler Yuta and uh, Lee Moriarty that we saw before. Cage must be pretty pumped about his lady sign with AEW. Yeah, like she looked nervous in her first interview in ROH. And, and I'll say this. I do think that Cage will be doing a lot more featured in ROH. I think he'll be off the main roster now for a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. But at the same time, if you can get him dominating down there, because I do believe that they're starting to starting to segregate the schedules for ROH and uh, AEW right now, because if you didn't know for the taping schedule what they're doing right now, they did a a bulk taping on last Sunday. And I do believe they're doing another bulk taping this Sunday as well. They're doing Sunday tapings and then... Like the Saturdays are collision. I think we got two more collisions. Book for Saturday. Ne next week's they're taping on Thursday, which is smarter than heck. Which once again, uh, for those that are asking, we are going to be doing the dual... Uh, the dual watch along here. I'm going to try and fix the audio so that we don't have to worry about uh, WWE giving me a flag for copyright anytime soon. So I'll try and work it out so that it, it, it sets up the same way that we have it here right now. But I love how Shivani in the commercial break is talking about how the tag teams are so deep here. With the fact that they have zero focus on the tag titles right now. The tag titles haven't been defended forever. I, I do think that it won't be long until the uh, Bucks end up losing those tag titles again. Whether that be Wembley or before. I, and I really do hope that the promo that the the acclaim did on Wednesday actually is re or sorry they did it after blood and guts sorry so it's online if you haven't had a chance to see it basically it says that yeah this is no longer the happy go lucky we're going to rhyme all over the place deal but it was actually very well done so if you haven't had a chance to go check it out AEW's X account is a hell of a follow if you like clips and that, so definitely make sure you check it out. As we're getting throughout this entire picture, picture they're just going to be pumping everything they can right now into it. I will say of those three matches that are going on tonight for... Battle of the Belts. I would have to say Willow and Deanna is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most. The last time that Taya got a TV match, I was actually in the building here in uh, Edmonton against Britt Baker, and it was not a good match. So... The Von Erickson and uh, Dustin here, they're showing the graphic for it. They worked really well last night against the Dark Order. And it was a very simple story. Uh, the Dark Order kept attacking uh, 
Dustin at ringside, so he couldn't be on the apron for the hot tag. The Von Erics took a lot of the a lot of the abuse. Got a couple hot tags himself, but the ultimate hot tag was for Dustin, and then just went from there. But yeah, I think we got three more weeks of this for a collision up until the... It's the week before Wembley because they're running Dynamite and Collision out of... Uh, uh, out of a barn in, uh, in England prior to, so. So I do appreciate, one thing I get a good laugh at and appreciate, I found a way to piss off a bunch of trolls this week. Because when uh, the mayor of London announced that it, they're looking to try to get the first ever international WrestleMania, I just turned out, eh, 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 that ain't true. We got two in Toronto. And everybody's like, oh, he said international. You guys are North America. You're the same. And I basically, as politely as I could, I'm like, no, we're not, not even close. And go to hell with that idea. Claudio is having so much fun out here. Stupid wrestling fans. Oh, I don't even know if it's wrestling fans or not. It's just the life of X. And I know we were talking about it earlier, but... People are going to have their opinions on everything. Like Between that and what's going on with CM Punk right now and the, the attempted cancellation again... Which is completely dumb if you ask me. We were talking about it earlier if you, if you didn't hear. Uh, during a panel, uh, we had uh, CM Punk putting his arm around Zoe Stark. Just as they were talking about something and having a good moment. And everybody's like, oh, well, he's going to start cheating on his wife and all that stuff with Zoe. I'm like. You idiot. I think that's the best way to explain that. So, uh-oh. No, no, seriously, people are are coming up with that this week. And it just... It's so stupid. It, it's fun to watch, don't get me wrong. Like, you just sit back and you're like... Are you guys really this dumb? Like, I'm not a big CM Punk fan, and... Oh, God, here we go. Okay, I didn't get a chance to see the Royal Rampage, but I also heard you want to talk. Oh, we're getting a meat chance, folks. Uh, I'm a little worried right now with AEW on one thing. Are they turning Darby Allen into uh, the same thing that we complain about with John Cena? Or any time that they start pushing somebody onto us. Sorry, the early Roman Reigns, maybe. Because in the process of a week and a half, we've had Darby and Blood and Guts get... He's going to get a TNT shot next week. And spoilers, if you haven't watched Rampage, I'm sorry, but... What the hell? Uh, somebody just cut out my. I don't know what's going on, but every once in a while, I just get a re. So, 
somebody just randomly hits home or something on my uh, on my remote, even though I'm the only one in the play building. I think people like Darby more, though. Yeah, I get it, but. Oh. Yuta got the pin? Well, I guess Yuta can get that extra edge back after losing the, TV, the pure title last night. But yeah, with Darby, it, like the fact that he's getting a world title shot at, at Arthur Ashe, plus he's getting the TNT title shot next week, plus he's got blood and guts. Like, to me, it's just a little bit of overkill. Ooh, Mortos and Hologram. That is going to be an understated doozy of a match. With the fact that... Uh, the fact that Mortos... Uh, for those that didn't know, he was formerly known as Black Tarus in... Uh, in AAA. AAA kept the name, so he had to switch over. And then uh, you got Hologram, who was Aramis in AAA. So these guys have faced each other many times in AAA. And th this should be a good, another good showcase for... It, it was gonna be, it's going to be a great showcase for Hologram and what he can do. He was only in blood and guts because of Kingston's injury. Be it as it may, like, find somebody. You didn't have anybody else in that roster to get in there instead. But the problem is with that, eh, McGee, when we get into that, you ended up making Darby the focal point of the end of the match. Which, I, if you didn't make him the focal point and... Maybe you get Mark Briscoe to get that title shot or something. Fine. No big deal. Even even Briscoe, you don't... You book Briscoe to lose the title yesterday to Roderick Strong. Spoilers, he didn't. He won. And then... Uh, then you book him on that TNT title match. Maybe get him into that TNT title situation to have that. That would be actually a lot of fun with... Um, when it comes down to uh, situations like that with with dealing with what happened before with him, I think is the best plus. I'm trying to skirt around an issue without trying to go for it. WBD had a problem with the Briscoes to start off. I think it's waned quite a bit now and people are starting to learn better, but you know there's still going to be some certain people that are going to think that way, right? And that worries me a little bit. Like it's it's always great until you find the last little thing that caused the problem. Sort of like flying a drone in other uh, other teams' practice closed practices, right? You idiot! Seems like I'll be using a lot of that just to sum up everything lately. So, but no, um, one thing I'm very happy about is the fact that. It, it seems like AEW is just in a very comfortable spot right now. It's not... The amount of BS that's been coming out lately has actually dived down quite a bit. Uh-oh. Thank you. 
God bless Kyle O'Reilly. The baby's scared for his life right now. The baby's like, get me out of here right now. Right, right now. Oh my goodness, this is rough. Kyle treats his baby, <laughs> treats that baby a lot better. I love Orange. He's like, am I done already? Yeah, it, it, it's nice to see a lot of these wrestlers just getting into their roles of just feeling comfortable. Like, you look at Claudio in the last match, you look at Mark Briscoe in that promo. If you can get rid of a lot of this BS and just let them work, and it just seems like when you get people to work without having to worry about the extra BS and garbage going on, it just feels good. It just feels great just to, you know, have that all run together. So for those that have checked him out already, what do you guys think of Hologram in his, like he had his debut against Gringo Loco last week? He reminded me a lot of Commander and Vikingo and where where not so much just the fact that he was that he had a great job, did a great job, but he also had it, it seemed like he had a lot of nervousness going in. Like we saw so far, yeah, like there's a lot of potential there. And I let and the fact that we could have a complete lucha division here in AEW I almost think eventually that's what we might end up getting. Oh, I saw this last night. This was a lot of fun. Commander and uh and the Beast Mortos. Like these guys are just out to just show everything off. And the fact Mortos is getting all this extra TV time right now. I, I love how Shivani's talking about that, about that promo. Like, it seriously feels like it's me when I wake up in the morning. Brr, ah! But here's another guy that's been getting a lot of TV time over the last, what is it, 48 hours? Oh, tried to go for an arm drag and said nope. Oh, Jesus, here we go. And the fact that these two could go without even, like, thinking about it. Oh, no, nope, enough of that. You can tell that Hologram had some nerves last week, but you don't have them this week. The fact that everything's a lot more solidified, a little more settled down.
Even Mortos is in the point here where he's just... It almost makes me feel like uh, Mortos is a bit of Brian Cage, uh, just in a smaller version. May not be built the same way, but he's a big guy that could do so many things that he's not supposed to be able to do. I'm surprised they don't advertise all out the same time here. You only got two weeks difference, so you only got, what, two shows to book it? In that first show, a lot of people just aren't going to care, so... Hey, Dodger. Yeah, look. Odds are right now we will go with baseball tomorrow night. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Dodger. Like, I'm looking at things. Like, I've been trying to do some grinding offline with MLB The Show, and it just... It, it seems like they've done the last update. It's just gotten harder and harder to the point where it's almost not fun. But I want to stick it out. We're going to go... Uh, Oh, there goes the video. There goes the feed. Great. Uh, hope everybody's got a stale picture as well right now. Might have to go back and reload here in just one second, but um, we are going to get into it next Friday as well when the new uh, the new packs drop. Those new. Oh, there we go. They got the video back, man. I just got to work on the audio. There we go. But yeah, those new action figure cards that they got coming out on Friday, those just seem to be a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll see. I do want to get a little bit more into the Backbreaker Fight Club. With all the announcements coming down over the last few days and all the new big things coming up. I will have a formal... I, I should have a formal schedule done up. Um... Ready for you guys for Monday. Typically, I take Monday off. Tuesday's a bit of wild card. Then we're back here on Wednesday for AEW Dynamite. Morto's just literally trying to rip the mask off here. I wonder how many mass hologram has on tonight. This crowd is trying to get into it here. I, there's only 1,200 people in there, so you're not going to get the... You're not going to get that craziness that you would in an arena setting, but at the same time, they can be loud, so... Like, he keeps ripping at the mask. I wonder if he realizes somebody can rip at his own mask. Well, the gram, everybody's trying to get behind the gram here and not in stuff for once. I, I love that half the commercial break was him just trying to rip at the mask. Oh, he tried to do the kick and he, oh God. I like this. Let's just skip out of the way a few times. Oh God, two and a half, let's go. Two and a half flips without even thinking. The crowds are going absolutely nuts for that. I would too. Half the crowd's cheering hologram, the other half's cheering lucha. 
Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. What would you guys think of actually having a Lucha division in AEW? It's not like Tony Khan's not afraid to put extra belts together. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That's got to hurt. Why didn't the ref count? That was a stack cover, though. I I guess they're trying to adjust for something there. I don't know. That referee just confused the hell out of me on that call. Nice little kick. Oh, there we go. Where's hologram plant? Oh, God. I don't know how much that destroyer he got, but he got a fair bit of it. This crowd's going with it. That's that's the cool part. Well, he won't be okay after this spot. Jesus! Uh, that camera view didn't do it justice. He literally flew the, le the length of the ring to get to him in that cannonball there off the top. Like, that is not just borderline nuts. That is nuts. Oh, God, what's he doing now? I think Mortos was supposed to catch him on that suicide dive. Unfortunately not. Just the way that he, the way, the way that things fell there. Like you see, he took about three steps with him in his hand and then he just had to let him go. Ooh, oh, God. Fist bumping with the kids. That's like an extra power, isn't it? Oh, no. No, no, no. You're not. You're not even close. Oh, God. Jesus. Poison Rana? Like we said, it, it, it's not perfect. I don't expect it to be, that, frankly. Just because it is that... Uh... There we go. Kick, it, kick to the head. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hologram's in trouble now. Backbreaker to backbreaker, backbreaker on power bomb on knee, clothesline take your head off. Damn. Still fighting. I'm actually really impressed. They're giving him what twenty five minutes here, and we still got what four more matches left tonight. I'm assuming conglomeration versus premier athletes won't be that long. You got Pac versus Leo Rush, which should take the sweet time. FTR versus MXM, we 
But that Thunder Rosa Maya match might not be as long as we'd want. Oh God. Oh God. I saw this last night. Oh no. Oh, reversal. Okay. Last night they did the Avalanche Power Slam. Crucifix bomb. Okay. Little crucifix bomb into uh into a little tight cover there for the one, two, three. Not bad. I think it was a my straw cradle, but either way. I really do like how that how they're presenting hologram here. Giving him two guys that he should know very well right off the bat. Gringo Loco and uh, essentially Black Taurus. So Thunder Rosa and Maya World are going to be the lead off to hour two. Okay. Now I saw it's, I, I saw a comment about this online earlier that um, there were, someone was complaining that they only had a squash match on uh, Rampage for the women on on the Friday, and they only ever get one match for uh, the women on Wednesdays, even though they had two last week. But I digress. I got a feeling WBD is making some of these calls on the number of women's matches there. Just feeling that the women's matches won't get the ratings that they need. Personally, I think it's bunk, but until they give them the chance to prove it, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything about it. So I think Collision's proving that, you know, the talent in the women's division is quite top notch here. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with uh, Thunder Rosa here and see where that goes. Wonder if they're going to bring out Diana again here for another spot because she's going to be out here a little later taking on Willow Nightingale for that in that CML Eliminator match. Sorry, I picked up some ghosts earlier today, so figure use a little bit of that just to keep me going here for the rest of the night. But once again, as we're getting to the top of the first, well, top of the second hour here, as we got uh, two more hours to go here. Once again, everybody, thank you for stopping by. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, we are here every Wednesday and Saturday as part of our uh, AEW coverage here. Uh, normally, after this, we will we'll have some WWE 2K24, uh, my GM mode. Because we have three hours of wrestling tonight, I actually uh, did the uh, bookings for this week actually on Wednesday. So I did a double shot on Wednesday. Uh, they'll be up on our YouTube page here, our gaming YouTube page, which there's the link for you in the chat. For those that are watching live here on Twitch, it'll be right there for you. So uh, hop on there. Please give us a subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, it we'll be doing another double booking of uh, WWE 2K24 My GM next Wednesday coming up here uh, because next Saturday we will be doing a co-branded SummerSlam slash AEW Collision sidecast here. So now that I remember, it starts at five o'clock, so I can make sure I'm here on time for seven Eastern for those on the East Coast here. Uh. I'm going to see if I can maybe fit on. I'm going to put uh, WWE on my monitor instead of on my uh, TV this time because I can have it on my TV. I just viewed it on my TV until collision starts. Then we can slip over there. And I'll figure it out. For those that didn't know. Oh, Thunder Rosa got the memo. 
She's got the Wolverine gear on tonight. Okay, so Maya is one of those that, you know, is the locals. At least they didn't have to mention Booker T as part of that, so. Oh, this crowd's a little more 50-50, it sounds like. I guess if we do have somebody local. I do find it funny the one time when uh, Jericho and Big Bill were in Edmonton, the crowd was more 75-25 for the other, for Mo Jabari and uh, Harlan Abbott who were facing him there. And I want to give a quick shout out here to uh, Top Town Wrestling, who just completed a six days of uh, wrestling over at our our local fair days here in uh, Edmonton. Here, K days. We got uh, we got that going on, and then coming up here in just a few weeks, Love Wrestling is uh, running a card in West Edmonton Mall, the biggest mall in uh, Canada. And for a long while, it was the biggest mall in the world until Minnesota had to stick their nose in it as they're bringing in Rob Van Dam for a card here in town. I, I did like that it, they're talking about the Royal Rampage there. The fact that Darby and Brody went at it just as Darby came in the ring. Don't ever give Thunder Rosa the L because she'll just rip you apart. Thunderosa showed a little more of a vicious side here. I like this. She had that forgot who I am promo last week. Well, after you get beaten for the fifth time by your uh, rival. I honestly don't think, frankly, Thunder Rosa has not been able to get out of the blocks since she's come back from injury. It just. She's one of those that I, I think might be one of the biggest, biggest busts that AEW has. Like, it, it almost feels like she doesn't jive with the rest of the roster. And I'm just saying this based on what I've seen from, from her in terms of... Oh, there we go. I don't think anybody expected to tap out like that. All right. Didn't she have a heat a few years back? I, yeah, like that's something that, that was talked about. And whether it was true or not, who knows? Like, you can never know when it comes to this stuff, really, to be honest, right? But at the same time, you look at uh, just, just watching Thunder Rosa's work, like, 
Like tonight was fine because she, she's working with an enhancement talent. Spends too much time on busted open. I'll give you that one. Holy crap. Archer took wait a second. Um Are you guys see what I'm seeing on my screen? Archer Osprey is going to be amazing. Oh, Archer's cleaning up the locker room again. I like this. See, these are all video these are all the people that talk about fighting games not being any good. Like there's your Call of Duty player. There's your Fortnite and your uh, League of Legends players. Oh, and here comes your GTA player. Oh, GTA player got away. <laughs> He's got to go after the GTA guy. Oh, that was great. I definitely will... Uh, Definitely enjoy that, especially when you when you think of it that way. Who would have thought in 2024 you would have a faction name called the Conglomeration? Yeah, I'm still worried about that baby, the way that he was holding him. Even the baby's like, what the hell did I do to deserve this? I don't know who's the better facials, Kyle O'Reilly or the baby. All right, that was a little bit of cheap heat. So what we got? Oh, they only had about five minutes for that match. Okay. Yeah, this will probably get about a good 10, 15 minutes here as we go along. Question for you. Did Drew get told to delete the Perry post or was that part of the whole thing? I... Here's my thoughts on it. First of all, I love the post. I love how Drew just... IDGAF, I believe, is the theory of the world right now when it comes to Drew, Drew McIntyre and all this. I think it was posted and I honestly feel that it wasn't Punk that told him to get rid of it. Do you honestly want uh, that photo sticking around once contract negotiations come up? And then somebody can use it as a tampering tool? Like if Perry's contract comes up, that's the one I'm more worried about. And they show this picture of him with Drew and shaking hands and all that. There could be talk that there could have been tampering there, right?
I, I don't think Tony Khan would be that worried about it. I do think WWE Legal probably did. It was out there. It got its desired effect. Enough people screenshotted it, so you know it's going to be there forever. I love Nigel and some of his responses here. It was the most amazing thing on X. Yeah, I, I will. There's just a way that you can take X and just use it for yourself. And I, I just love when they're able to do that. Just because it's such a cesspool, but it it could be a targeted cesspool that you could use. I still can't believe Briscoe kept the title. I, I thought that maybe, you know, and the fact that Athena kept her title as well, it pretty much solidifies that Billy Starks is going to be the one that uh, takes the title off Athena, which story-wise makes the most sense. Ishii running interference, I love it. And Briscoe just flawlessly over the top. And Aubrey sitting here with a chair, he's like, what the hell is this thing here? Nice little breakdown here of... Uh, breakdown of a match i i think it's a lot easier on these guys to do a triple like a six man for and that's why you see a lot of six man matches on tours like i know we've been experienced up here with a lot of uh indie tours with uh canadian wrestling's elite they've uh been up here well they usually run in run in edmonton they do the unique thing about CWE is the fact that they run 31 shows in 31 days all across Western Canada, Eastern Canada a little bit. I think they've done a couple shows in Toronto, a few in Timmins. They haven't really gone deep east because they literally drive everywhere. And they'll run a show a day. But when you're doing shows like that, you will see a lot of six-man matches, eight-man matches, multi-person matches where you don't have to go as crazy as you do in a one-on-one -on -one all action, all balls to the wall kind of match, right? It Six-person matches are the epitome of work smarter, not harder. Like, don't get me wrong. You got to put your effort in. You got to, you got to provide a good match, but there are a lot of times where you can just, you know, grind it down to a halt, work over your opponent while your partners are resting on the outside. Like even right here, while you're watching the premier athletes work down, even the athletes aren't doing a whole lot. Hell, I could say Sterling's probably doing a lot, lot more work than a couple of the guys for now. Let's get snapping on that headlock there. Like, and when, once again, just grind things down to a halt, make them. Your big thing is trying to get the crowd into it, and even Nice is trying it, even though he's not supposed to be, right?
the one thing I love about AEW is the fact these wrestlers have been on the indies. They understand what it's like to interact with fans. It's a interact with the smaller crowds. Interact like way to get them moving. Way to get them going. And the fact that this match can be a little bit slower because our next match coming up here, Pac versus Leo Rush. I guarantee you that's going to be a match that's going to be it's going to be 5 to 10 minutes and it's going to be all high gear. I'd have to see one of my favorite moments of last night during the death by this death before dishonor pay, uh, PLE was uh Ishii in the ring ends up taking a pile driver from uh, Taven and uh Bennett uh stuff Stuff pile driver, but because he has no neck, he no sold it. Cause that that's the big story, right? Cause he was like they talk about neck strong with uh, Roddy Strong all the time. Like how can you be neck strong when you don't have no damn neck? I believe was the pre pre match interview highlight there, so. I have to say, like, I know I have to say because I'm saying it here, but I, I digress at this point. Mark Briscoe and Jay, two guys I completely underestimated personally when I first saw them. I, I got suckered in by appearances. You know how appearances can be deceiving? Like when I first saw them, I didn't think they'd amount to much. I, I wasn't really in depth into, uh, into ROH the early years. You only have X number of hours a day, and I, I, I say that to a lot of people. I know that's why. Like you see, our streams typically run. There's no stream on Monday because I, I know a lot of people want to watch Raw. But in terms of SmackDown, I usually don't have time to watch. I just, I'll catch the highlights as we go. Either I'm working or else uh, we're streaming here on the Fridays. T same thing with TNA. It, you can try to watch wrestling 24-7. Smack, well, SmackDown was really bad because it was taped. I will say this forever. You have a tape show like that, you're not going to get much out of it. And that's the thing about TNA as well. They do tape shows, so there's a, only a certain ceiling of excitement you can get for it. Well, the crowd was dead because that, WWE crowds at tapings are used to two hours worth of wrestling. But unfortunately, they got four. Which realistically they could have, they, I, I almost thought they could compact in the three, but unfortunately they had that tag team gauntlet. So it wasn't exactly the ability to, oh, well, great to take out your own tag partner, you nuts. And Woods just brings it back in. Oh God. Jesus, Woods. Woods hasn't had much of a chance to to get back into things because he's been uh, he's been injured for a lot of it. And Sterling gets clocked. And into that arm bar. Yeah, you get that Juju, Juju Katami on. If you get it on properly, it's an instant snap.
Oh God. What the hell was that? That that's basically what Jericho on my screen automatically gets that. Oh God, Jericho's getting more TV time. Oh God. All right. Oh God, here we go. So Samoa Joe is taping uh, Twisted Metal Season 2. And we're not really sure what what's going on with Hook right now. I think he might be in a contract issue right now. Oh, God. It's... Oh, they brought Lance Archer out. That's cute. All right, well, I guess we're going to have a match here now. I guess he is a home... He is a homeboy, right? Well, this should last about three seconds. Jesus! Oh God. He's actually putting the fight in. I, I like that. Oh, here we go. Blackout, we're done. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And the hometown boy wins easily. See, why didn't they do this last week when Sheeta uh, got, or sorry, Sky Blue got injured? If, if they would have done this right after the uh, Sky Blue injury just have like they did the interview with archer re running through everybody why not have somebody come down they could have killed that extra five minutes that they had to regroup i, I think it's a lesson learned from tony khan on that i hope it is for the fact if you do get ahead or you do have an issue like that throw a little thing out there just to get things back on time and that's been always the biggest uh, question about TK's booking. Anybody who's out there complaining about TK not having stories for his wrestlers in AEW, they're not watching the product, a.k.a. Scott Steiner in his interviews this week. I just saw that come out. Scott Steiner did an interview and basically said that 
AEW is not interesting because he doesn't have stories. I call BS at this point. He just doesn't watch the product. I'll just, I, I leave it as that. Everybody just wants their sound bites so they can get their extra little pop there. So, um, but on top of that, um, it, it's the ability to adapt as you go along, right? That's an old argument that is just that old. Yeah. Like, and, and the fact that it, I don't know if it's really ever been true. Like AEW's always had their stories. It's just for 20 years. And yeah, for the most part, it's the majority of 20 years. I, I give TNA credit, but TNA basically ran the same style as uh, WWE with their monthly pay-per-views and, and whatnot. Even when they went back, when they were doing the weeklies, they had their big ones every, every month or so. They turned the fans into an instant gratification society for the fact that every feud, every main feud hit a climax every month. And then you just reset and move on and got to get it changed. AEW has been turning it into a little bit more of a, okay, we got three months to build things up. We got two months to build things up. Let's take our time and build these up well. You know what? Let's not finish the feud at this this pay-per-view. Let's, uh, let's have a very good match, but we're going to carry it on to our next one. They're able to do that. And the longer stories, the bigger the payoff... The, I would have to say that some of the bigger feuds that uh, d that AEW has had, like for example, the rise of Hangman Page to get the uh, world title, uh, the defeating of uh, the the Cleaner who ended up with four titles. Hell, you can see the rise of FTR back to the tag titles, stuff like that. And even what we're going to see here, like, hell, look at what happened during the Owen Hart for the women's. The fact that we got, holy crap, we're getting Pac versus Leo Rush for a main event tonight? I'll take that. It still feels weird to see Cash without the uh, the full beard and whatnot. T.O. Dax and Primo Cash, I like that. Uh, T.O., I believe that's a Cerveza. But yeah, we're going to actually get to see MXM Collection here. Who would have thought? And I'm just throwing this out here. Who would have thought a throwaway gimmick for some B-level wrestlers that they just couldn't get over in WWE took that gimmick and are running with it? Not just walking with it, they're running with it. These two are the, and the fact that we actually get to see a finisher from these two, because that's something we never got to see in WWE because they never won. <laughs> just say, not saying, just saying. No, this would be a lot of fun watching these guys. Fight. They they made their debuts last night during the pre-show of Ring of Honor. And then uh, Melissa Santos's first promo was against was uh, with uh, MXM Collection as they were showing up. So oh yeah, that's that's right. I forgot about that. 
So this is the first wrestler that's been signed that's been scouted by the Jags. Man, Mansoor's definitely got a look to him. Like, you can almost, like, we were talking earlier about wrestlers that are just having fun. You got to think that these two guys are just, you know, for all the crap that they've had to put up with. <laughs> that they had to put, they had to deal with in the WWE. They they're just got to be sitting pretty right now. Now they get a fa they get a chance to face what arguably could be the best tag team on the planet right now. I'd have to give the devil his due, but I do think the Bucks do take that role right now. Titles or no titles, they still when there's a level of wanting to be a part of it. <laughs> That's one way to run into the corner. Do you remember when they had Mason Madden on commentary on Raw? Because they couldn't find any other place for him. There was about three weeks of it. Until he ended up having to take a bump for someone. Because he was trying to defend Michael Cole or something. So. Man. Oh, Jesus. Nice, nice try, Cash. I know you're going to try and do some things that try to, you know. Oh, nice, nice double team. And this is something we never got a chance to see. Like, I have to give another, another great example of this. And that was in TNA and that was the inspiration. When Peyton Royce and Billy Kay got a chance to work on their own. Outside of the boundaries of WWE and getting on the getting everything on their own you could tell what kind of tag team they really were <laughs> and mason literally just walk it up no no we're gonna call time out right now So MXM's actually playing the heels pretty good here tonight. I wasn't really sure which way we were going to go with that. But yeah, it looks like we're going to get 15 minutes of Leo Rush and Pack. Because they do have to finish Collision on time because of the uh, Bell of the Belts. I don't think you're going to try and drip that match into one of the... I am a little disappointed in the Battle of the Belts being two Eliminator matches and one title match. Like, Battle of the Belts should be a battle for the belts. Not battle around the belts. Oh, we got violent fans in that crowd. Did you see the uh, the girl that hit MJF in the match against uh, Will Ospreay is actually making national TV and 
MJF went uh, on a rebuttal video uh, in an interview and declared that he's going to be suing for assault. Uh, that little girl, which I, I found absolutely hilarious and so enjoyable to watch. Like, it's an old trope that works really well. Very nice leg drop there, double team. These guys know their gimmick and they know how to run with it. So good on them right now. It was a twinkle toes elbow drop. Oh, that's a faux pas there by MXM. You didn't know where the camera was. If you don't know where the camera is, you shouldn't be posing that way, right? Granted, if you're doing a regular dynamite setup or a collision, frankly, a collision setup outside the esports arena, you that is where the hard cam is going to be. So I guess I shouldn't be too hard on them, but... Well, it's just some good old fashioned wrestling here. Now I'll even give it more of a pass since it wasn't picture in picture. I would love to see MXM get the victory here. I just don't know if they will. Just to get him a victory going forward here. But right now the storyline is FTR going after the tag titles. And I think it eventually could lead up to an acclaimed heel, heel turn here. Because FTR is just trying to buck, buck in the way, no pun intended. Yeah, gotta love you gotta love the old fashioned distracted cover bit. This is this is turning out to be a great match. For a for a debut match on collision. Really surpassing my expectations of what I expect, what I thought would happen. Ah, nice little hip attack there. Into the pose. And, and not only are they great, you know, wrestlers, they're also great streamers as well. I know lately they've been doing a lot of stuff with Dijak. Or they have been doing a lot of stuff with Dijak on their channel. Just watching over matches, talking stories. Just a bunch of couple cool cool guys. Well, here we go. A nice little heart attack with the leg lariat there. That's actually, I do believe, Owen Hart's version of it. That was Owen and Jim's version, I believe. Cash gets the hot tag and they go out to the wide shot. 
Come on, guys. Sorry, I'm a little picky when it comes to camera work. Nice little knee boot there. Cash doing the block. Oh no. Gory special just out of nowhere there. And Madden's so smart. Like, one thing I've always loved about tag team wrestling, one of the old tropes, you make you let the you let the guy get the pin till two and make sure you can bring it up for three. I'll be honest, I did not expect this, but I, I love it. Oh no, here we go. Nope, they're not gonna get it because they're in the they're in the wrong order. It's got to be Ax Dax doing the uh, pile driver setup, unless he's still injured. This is where the shatter machine's gonna kick in here right away. There's the blind tag. Shatter machine, big rig, whatever you wanna call it. Good night. And Dax do the little Madon half attempt at a Madonna pose. Do have to say though, this is a very competitive match, and really do enjoy how things are things are going here with MXM. They look great. They're really smooth. A lot more than we expected, right? Oh, are we gonna touch tips? Are we gonna touch tips? Shout out to the Rads here with the touch tips. Oh my goodness. Just the tip. Ultimate show of respect, just touching tips. Oh, and here comes that acclaim promo I was telling you about earlier. Wow. Here we go. I'm not serious. Now, you got 
You weren't serious. All right. I, I love this. I love that promo. I absolutely love every part of it. It is so... It, it, it brings out a different side of the acclaim that, you know... When it comes to Caster, I still can't stand him, to be honest. But at the same time... you can get a little bit behind what's going to be going on with him right now, especially Bowen. Like Bowen's looks like he's hit another level and I wouldn't mind putting the tag titles back on the acclaimed. I almost feel that there might be a possibility here. You could get the titles onto the acclaimed and then have them feud with FTR and turn them into heels because they were that damn good and you guys had no faith in them or we didn't have any faith in them. Sorry. And it just, it, it spirals out of that. And I, I think that would actually be a real good, a real good setup for that and a real good way to think of things there. So, but yeah, our last uh, commercial break here in the show before we get to our main event uh, so as tradition here, I'll give a quick rundown of what's going to be going on in the channel this week. Uh, Sunday night, we're going to be doing a little baseball, uh, probably a little conquest, maybe do some events. We'll see how things go. I'm not hitting worth a damn, so probably do a little conquest just because it'll be a little easier on us. Uh, from there, no stream Monday. Tuesday's the wild card night. Might be do a little Zelda grinding to set up for Thursday or might open up the Backbreaker Fight Club. And the feed just died again. Jesus criminy. Uh, Thursday, we are going to be going to be looking to take on Ganondorf and finally finishing off Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Hopefully we can get there. Hopefully we don't get soft blocked. We got the travel medallion so we can find a way to get out of there if we have to. But, uh, and then Friday, there is a new program coming down, a new set of cards for, uh, for MLB The Show. I want to check those out. Probably going to be a double XP weekend. And then Saturday, we're back here with Collision. So... Make sure you stick around. If you're new here, make sure you hit the follow button. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We have great content coming out multiple times during the week on our YouTube channel. For those that are here, I will put out the link for the YouTube channel as well. Um, this week coming up on the YouTube channel, it is uh, Tuesday. Andre and Melball have their latest reviews of... Um, the last Dream Matter Gold show. Uh, that was on July 13th, just a couple weeks ago here. I believe it was in Tokyo. Uh, Thursday, they have the review of Hungarian Revolution from Real Canadian Wrestling. And Friday will be the review, NJPW Pure Wrestle review of... Oh, good, they found the, found the ability to get our feedback. Damn, TSN. Uh... The review of nights one and two of the G1 Classic. Shout out to Kuniski Takeshita, who is doing absolutely great in the G1 right now.
And Pac just... Leo not wearing his customary coat tonight. Must be a way too warm for it. But it's nice to see Leo Rush get get a few spots this weekend. He did a, he did an absolute great job in uh, the Survival of the Fittest match uh, last week with, or sorry, yesterday with. Uh, for the TV title there, which Atlantis Jr. Uh, ended up uh, retaining. I don't know whether that was the actual booking or if um, or if it was supposed to be Shane Taylor winning. As soon as Shane Taylor went out with an injury, it looked like everybody called an audible. But as, mu as much as I like Leo, I think Pac might be a little bit too much to bite off here. We're, we're going to have absolutely three. Well, we're definitely going to have. In my prediction, we're going to get two great matches on Battle of the Belts tonight. As much as I love Taya as a wrestler, she's got to prove it to me here tonight against Tony. Last few times she's been in the ring here on AEW, it's been a little bit rough. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a good match tonight. I know Deanna and Willow will put on a great match, and then that six man. I, I I'd pretty much expect that be the main event. And, and frankly, I do feel the Von Eriks winning those six man titles at home will be a will be something great to watch. Even if they do lose it in a couple weeks. Cause I don't think the Von Eriks are signed to to AEW. They're more freelance right now. If they do end up uh, do end up signing, it'd be great. They'd be a great addition to the Ring of Honor roster. I think Leo is as good as Pac. Don't win that. Nah. Pac, Pac has a complex about losing. Plus, he also has that guaranteed title match for, uh, for the international title. By the way, good to see you here tonight, RK. Yeah, I've had a chance to see Leo live. And just the level of maturity he's shown now compared to what he's done years ago. And like I was mentioning earlier, his uh, participation last night in that survival of the fittest six-way match, he did a fantastic job in there. All six of them did. I know that uh, Shane Taylor ended up with a shoulder injury apparently out of it. So things had to change as we went, but still it ended up being a great match. I highly recommend, and without any extra hyperbole, for everything that went on during that card, Death Before Dishonor might be the the PPV slash PLE of the year so far. Every match was so smooth. Every match was had a lot of story to it. The only real uncomfortable part of the night Besides me getting disgusted about seeing everything that uh, Diamante and Layla Hirsch were doing to each other. Might have been uh, Billy Starks doing the fake uh, the fake out spot with the neck again. It, it just felt too obvious that it was a fake out spot. Especially with what happened last week with Sky Blue. And the fact they actually did have to call the match. I haven't watched it, but you probably didn't watch Slam Avert. 
I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I, I've heard many good things about Slammiversary as well. I, I will say this. I, I think that the top... If, if you're going to do a top 10 pay-per-views this year, it's not going to be a clean... <laughs> ah, you bastard. <laughs> Out of those 10 that are going to be on that list, I'd almost have to say that a quarter, if not half of them, will not be shows that are AEW or WWE. But definitely do yourself a favor. Check out uh, Death Before Dishonor last night. The, the the pacing of the matches, the flow, they they didn't have a bathroom break match, but it felt like you didn't need one. The pacing went up and down all over the place. Like, for example, I was talking about Diamante and uh, Layla Hirsch. They followed that up with the pure title match between uh, Lee Johnson and, uh, or sorry, Lee Moriarty and Wheeler Yuta. So you go from one extreme to the other, but it felt so good. And even like the Beast Mortals versus Commander to start the show off, like. The finalities and the uh, and the non-title changes on. Oh God! Leo got folded up like an accordion there. Yeah, and speaking of Slam anniversary and TNA in general, we were talking about it earlier in the show. There is so much potential there to be the one of, if not the top promotion in, in in North America in terms of quality of matches. I just cannot get over shows being taped. Well, Rush was smart there. Leo being smart there. Very good pickup there by Leo Rush there just to hit the brakes and and pop back to the way it is there. Letting uh, Pac basically hit himself on the mat. All right, folks. Um, Well, guess what? We've just made a uh, new... I stay away from the dirt sheets as far as tape. I do too for the most part, but... And here's an example I can give you, and we were talking about this as well. You look at the tape show for SmackDown this week, because they're out in Japan, which is a whole different ball of wax that we could talk about there. Um, you just don't get that same crowd reaction on a tape show versus a live one. It, it's weird. It's also the fact that you're getting four hours of wrestling from a crowd instead of two. It almost looks like next Saturday we're going to have a week off here, period, because, well, I'll be honest, I work until... I work until six, so I'm going to miss the first half. I didn't realize they were starting early, which I actually find is a very smart thing. They're not trying to, 
And AEW, of course, has long shows too. Like, that's why a lot of the times Collision doesn't have the same steam as you uh, would see with uh, Dynamite, right? And of course, same thing with Rampage too, right? That's why I'm not a big fan of the tape show. Like tonight, there's only a thousand people here, which... Like, I know they got 4,000 for Slammiversary, but for the the majority of TNA shows, this is the kind of crowd you're getting. How much time? We only got three minutes left here to finish this off, so... Well, yeah, next week, I think we'll just have we'll just have a spare week because if I'm not going to be uh, I, there's too many other talented streamers that are doing SummerSlam. I was going to do dual if uh, we we're doing collision same time, but they're going to be running collision before SummerSlam, which I I applaud them. They're very smart move. Personally, I feel that, you know, they should have some, collision every week that early it would suck for me but personally the 605 time slot would be perfect that they they used to have with AEW sat or a wcw saturday night it was always 605 it's here because of the way the seating looks and the production looks smaller than a yeah because uh i, I know with uh typical tna productions They'll actually get the last bit of seats. They'll try and put them up higher. And also they're tr they're filming from further back. And the other setup difference is I do believe in TNA, they use a less room in between the guardrails and the ring. Because I think AEW uses a good 10 feet around. While you might get five or six in a TNA setup. But yeah, I completely agree with you on how, uh, how it looks smaller. Jesus, all right. The problem is with these two guys. Oh God. I thought I thought Pac was gonna hit a poison run of his own. The hell is with my TV? Like it keeps cutting out. Especially right now. Get me back in here. Let's go. Sorry, it just literally signed me out of there. I don't know why. I'm thinking this might be a TSN thing, to be honest. Leo trying to get things going, but yeah, no. Oh, God. Pac just said, nope, we're done. I, I think it's my Roku TV interacting with TSN. Either that or the guy with the TV above me is trying to hit his buttons. I'll just make sure my remote's facing the other way. He knows he's going to Wembley, but what's he going to do? Because. Yeah, for for those that don't know, what I do is. Uh, uh, I hate this American title BS. 
Had to reinstall my Talos app today. You never know what's... That's fair. Like, myself personally, what I do here is I actually... I run my TSN app off my Roku TV, and that's what I'm watching this on. What I was going to be doing next weekend is running the WWE Network on my monitor and then have uh, the TSN app on my TV, but we'll have to see what happens. Obviously, we don't have to have that issue now. I am really happy to see Camille here in AEW finally getting a chance to show herself off. And the fact Brit's screaming the way, her uh, Mercedes is screaming the way she is. Oh, I, I love that line from uh, Tony. Are you prepared to die? Because I am. Now, for, if you weren't around on Wednesday, and shame on you if you weren't, but anyway. <laughs> uh, my opinion on Blood and Guts. I think Blood and Guts was an absolutely fantastic match up until the ending. The fact that it took Darby extra long to find the gas can. If they would have been able to speed it up a little bit, then fine, but. So now Darby gets a shot at the world title at Grand Slam, September 25th. I'm worried about getting a... Whoa. Tony with the new haircut, the new outfit. No Luther. I think Tony just simply snapped, and this is going to be a lot of fun here. Oh, and Ribicon Ian Ribicani's getting the uh, call here tonight. I like this. I have to watch Taya lose again? Yeah, it... Like, I, don't get me wrong. I love Ty. Like, I know she's a BC girl down your way. She, most of her uh, training happened here in, in Alberta with Lance Storm and up here working a lot of PWA. I uh, got a lot of Lucha Libre in her as well in Mexico. Like, I think Mariah May does come out, but I think it's after the match. I, I do think Taya does have something to prove here with the fact that, you know, the last couple times she's been on TV here, it, it's not just that she lost. It's just some of the performances were a little, little off, I think is the best way to put it. I know last time she was on Dynamite, it was against Britt Baker in Edmonton, and it just ended up not looking... Kind of embarrassing. So are you going to try? Oh, my goodness. This is a callback to her 
to the earlier match with uh, Johnny TV and Orange Cassidy where they were playing with glasses for the first 10 minutes. Oh, Shivani's there too. Okay. So is that a rip or is that just blood? Oh, that's just, oh, that's probably just from uh, the lipstick and whatnot. She's being ma matched. She's being matched up with Deanna now too. So she has to be made to look better. Absolutely. Like it almost looks like Thunder Rosa and Rachel Ellering might be working a little bit more together as well after that lumberjack match last week but who the booking is all over the place to be honest when it comes to that so all right mcgee you have yourself a good night uh yeah i guess we're not doing a collision stream next saturday so but i will be here on wednesday for dynamite so We'll, we'll chat a little bit more about that then. But yeah, good luck on your test tomorrow as well. Sorry. But uh, yeah, take care. Have a good sleep. We'll see you later. Uh, for those that don't know, McG is uh, in Ontario currently. So right now it is... 10 o'clock so it is getting a little late out there it's just past eight here in uh, local time here in edmonton alberta canada so we got plenty of time to watch some wrestling here tonight these two just unloading here by the way welcome anybody who's just popped in here and Thank you to everybody who has stopped by. Whether you're watching it live, whether you're watching on VOD here right now, we are watching the Battle of the Belts hosted on TNT. I, I think once the WBD uh, contract comes up, we, uh, we won't see any more Battle of the Belts because, well, as essentially when the Battle of the Belts was created, it's more of a a one hour promo show towards some of the bigger events that AEW does have. But right now with the amount of exposure that AEW is getting, like, don't get me wrong. They're not going to take away any TV time that they are given. But it almost seems just out of nowhere and unnecessary. A lot of the times there's nothing real built up towards it. Do I like WWE? Absolutely. Like I watch all, I watch all wrestling. Uh, the thing about WWE for me is I take a little bit more time to watch it on. Uh, if I'm going to watch it for the most part, I'm going to watch it uh, after. So I can fast through a lot of the fluff inside. Don't get me wrong. I love stories, but I, I like my stories a lot more told in the ring versus out. There are some great segments, like, I have some complaints about a lot of them, but I also do enjoy a lot of it. And frankly, I, the reason I do AEW watch-alongs, besides the fact that I love, I love watching AEW wrestling, is also the fact that not many people do these for AEW. Most people you hear talk about WWE and... Now TNA is starting to do picture-in-picture -picture ones now with, for them. So the streamers are allowed to show the video of uh, of TNA as well at the same time. <sighs> Favorite athlete. I'd have to think about that. For me, it's all about stories and matches. A 
like for me right now, I'd have to say probably Kevin Owens because he's always got a great story going on. He, he's always got, like, no matter what he does, he always has a, a great show, a great uh, motivation, and a, he knows how to tell stories all over the place. Usually I know Battle of the Belts is happening this time. I just found out today, but it's much like a Royal Rampage last night. Yeah, like, <laughs> I had maybe a week's, I think we had two weeks notice that Battle of the Belts was happening. Because I knew about it, because that's why we were doing a, uh, we were doing a double booking of WWE 2K24, so. Um, you like Cody Rhodes? Oh, he's, Cody has done a lot, and, and I've been, I've had the privilege of meeting him a couple times, and the fact that he knows as soon as he meets you, he knows who you are and he keeps that in memory for life. It's one of the skills he got. Oh, God. Thought she was bleeding. No, that's just their lipstick all over her teeth. But, uh, yeah, no, Co Cody, I'm very happy for what he's been able to accomplish in WWE. I think in many ways he did get a raw deal. Road to Valhalla. Well, Ty got her finisher in, but just won't get the pin there. I, I just think that Cody ended up coming in gr coming in at a great time and for me it's more about the booking of what he what they put him in versus what Cody can actually do because I, I think right now Cody with the title is a backstory compared to what's going on with the bloodline right now and, and same thing's happening on Raw like as far as I'm concerned, Damian Priest has been treated like a second-class champ. Because he's had to use interference to win all three times. Shania Payne? Oh, my... She didn't pull the arm back. Tony's arm fell in. That was just, ugh, all right. It's like the referee just magically. I also like Roman Reigns. Oh, Storm Zero, we're done. Yeah, all right, good. We got we got this one out of the way here. Also, like Roman, yeah, like Roman. Roman's got the top story right now, no matter what's going on. It's the same problem I had with Darby Allen. Like he got force fed to us a little bit too much, and I think they're doing that to Darby right now. But the fact that they've been able to alter, move it around, and it it's just a fantastic story that they're doing right now. Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, they're the more interesting ones for me in WWE. I like... Oh. This slut you can't rebut? All right. I don't mind the non cookie cutter stuff there with Rhea and Liv, but at the same time, it's like. Oh. 
I, I, I want to see the rest of this promo here. Then we'll get back to that in just a second here, RK. No. I love this. Tony is just snapped and I love every second of it. And Tony's just going goofy right now. All right, let's. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm back and I'm better than ever face facts I'm not singing any more Eric Bischoff songs tonight but uh let things how are not so expected a cookie I the only problem I have with the Rhea Dom live whole thing here what would the reaction be if it was the other way around if it was two guys fighting over say live or Rhea it, it almost, yeah, you got to be careful on those. I don't mind that they're trickling the line, but I think this is more of a Netflix thing than anything else. And I'm just waiting to see how the wide six play. I hope it turns out. I, I'm i not big into those scary storylines like that. I've never have been. I never will. The Bray Wyatt, I wasn't into it. I, I just wasn't. Like, I, I hope everybody does well, but I just... It's just not my thing. I I know that I have a hypersensitivity uh, personality, hypersensitive personality, so I can't watch too much horror, or it just gets to me. So, um, but like I said, I don't want anybody to fail, and I think that they do have a decent chance to go with it. But we'll we'll see what happens there. It's the reason TNA is my favorite to me. It's not could, yeah. Some of the storylines I have there are absolutely great. Um, the turn of Josh Alexander, a lot of people didn't see it. I, I sort of expected something from Josh coming up and now that he's going to be this psychotic that they, that he is, I, I think it's going to turn out real well for him. And like you were saying, MJF and Tony Storm aren't, I'd argue a bit of a point with MJF just because MJF is very, Whenever he gets on a mic, he's very Southern wrestling. Like he's always got to go for the cheapest heat possible as he's going through his promos. He'll hit a home run every once in a while. And that's why he gets all the primo spots. And he is a fantastic athlete and he is, he is the future of AEW. But at the same time, I, I, don't like how every promo he does, he spends half of it going for that Jerry Lawler cheap heat crap. 
and Tony Storm basically just removed, replaced her character, moved into this role, and I, I absolutely love how it turned out. And I'm always worried about what are they going to do next? And I, I got a feeling Mariah is going to win the title at uh, Wembley. But if she doesn't, whenever, whoever beats Tony Storm for the title, that's probably going to be the end of the gimmick. Because what do you do after that? She was so psychotic to get the title. You might want to do a little bit to get the title back, but at the same time, you want to get out of a gimmick like that before it grows stale. When's it going to get stale? It's like that. Uh, what what what's the best way to explain it? Um, for anybody that's watched The Price Is Right, they have the uh, the wall climber game, where the little yodeler goes up as uh, it gets closer, and you want to get as close as you can without falling off. That's exactly what's going to happen here with Tony Storm. She's going to keep working that gimmick. She's going to keep moving up. It has moved into a different phase right now since Mariah May's attack. You can see the haircut. You can see the change from black to white in terms of her gear. Now, where does it go so you don't completely fall off a cliff off that? I, I think it's going to eventually be when she loses the title. That's when she gets knocked out of it and, and then what she, what does she do from there probably take some time off first but then after that oh this is going to be a lot of fun here I, I still get a kick out of the fact that Rachel Ellering's the only one dressed as a lumberjack for a lumberjack match. Uh. Okay, so this is why I like Riccoboni as part of the team here because we do have match like this match here is a match we haven't seen before or had a reason to see. But Riccoboni knows about the history and the experience between these two. So the fact that he can bring it up and bring some semblance of why we're having this match, not just because it's a... Uh, not just because it's a qualifying match or an eliminator match for uh, the CML title. And the fact that the CML title is being featured on AEW programming, I find is a good bonus as well. Just like the AEW title was featured on CMLL when uh, Kyle Fletcher lost it to Atlantis Jr., I love a good old Greco-Roman knuckle lock here. <laughs> nice way to get out of that. And Willow just straight up hits a body slam. I love it. Just get right out of it easily that way.
Deanna had the AAA title, so I don't imagine CML necessarily wa wants Deanna to have theirs. I don't. Um, I don't think they care now because it's. Like it, like it's the same thing as with um, Death Triangle made their debut last week at uh, the CML show in uh, Monterey. And uh, the Lucha Brothers have been exclusively AAA. And I don't think really, I don't, honestly, I don't think Tony Khan really cares about AAA anymore. Not that I really blame him on a lot of stuff. Especially with, uh, with Conan's comments about the uh, mixed tag titles uh, previously. And how it was so disrespectful of, uh, well, the two times it was utterly disrespectful from AAA towards AEW. The uh, stripping of the title from uh, Sammy and Ty, Sammy and uh, Ty Mello. Uh, because they couldn't make it out to a show due to flight or whatever. And then the whole uh, FTR losing the AAA Tag Team Championships to Dragon Lee and his brother with Dragon Lee immediately following the match, forfeiting the title and getting on a mic saying, this is my last match in AAA as I'm moving to WWE. So essentially, FTR lost the tag titles to a, tri to a WWE team. And then the latest is just when Conan came on and just, he wouldn't even give wrestlers names. It's they and the, and I, I suggest looking it up. I don't have all the complete details, but I honestly don't think that Tony Khan cares about having any, uh, any wrestler in his promotion going to CMLL. Because you'll see now that like uh, wrestlers like uh, Vikingo are no longer around anymore. Like Commander was still in ROH last night taking on uh, the Beast Mortos. Formerly known as Black Taurus in, in AAA who AAA just decided they wanted to keep the name. So now he's known as the Beast Mortos. TNA still has a collection of TNA, so there's still that. There are things in the background of the companies moving towards exclusivity, although New Japan is still connected with TNA. It feels like New Japan's willing to work with most companies. I don't know how much more of a connection you're going to have with uh, TNA and New Japan anymore. I do know that uh, there is a working relationship with Dota. And it's also like the fight with uh, Marigold versus Stardom. Like if you didn't hear uh, earlier, I believe it was earlier today, it was announced that Anna Jay is going to be part of the uh, five-star tournament uh, for Stardom coming up. She's in basically a murderer's row of a group, but she's still going to be there, which having her in stardom is going to do nothing but make her better. Then, of course, you say Takeshita is in the G1, so. I, I don't know how much more of a connection New Japan's really going to have with TNA going forward.
Then, of course, you hear Marafuji is going to be a special guest over at SummerSlam next weekend. I think that's Pro Wrestling Noah, though. So that's the other company in uh, New Japan. And see, Mortos had that same pin in the first match tonight, and referee wouldn't count it. With access, that's that's different. Having a TV deal with a company is not the same as. Uh, having talent working with each other. Like, best example I can give for that is out in England right now. That sucked. That sucked. Um, Monday Night Raw in England is actually on TNT. And during the uh, Monday Night Raw this past week, there was actually ads for All In during the show. So TV is a whole different ball of wax compared to Anthem, of course, owns Axe. Yeah. Like having a TV contract with somebody versus having a working contract with somebody. Whole different ball of wax altogether. ROH has gone to their complete owned streaming service, which I'll be honest, it's 10 bucks wealth worth spent if you ask me. Like I was mentioning earlier with Death, by, Death Before Dishonor, they have it on the pay-per-views or they have it on the uh, streaming service. So even if you only buy the uh, streaming service once every three months, I just keep it running because, you know, cost of a pay-per-view is what, 40 bucks? And they have a show every four months? Basically pays for itself. These ladies are just going at it. Oh, and here comes Taya. She looks like she just went to the bathroom. Oh, is it going to be Thunder Rosa or is it going to be... Uh Rachel showing up. She's Nigel says doing yoga. What are you doing? Like Posey. She's got a weapon in the ring. Like, what the hell are you doing? Get rid of the weapon. Oh, here we go. There it is. We're done. So now we get to continue the feud. But Posey looked like a complete moron there. Hey, Posey, do us a favor. Get rid of the freaking weapon in the ring.
And we also have to remember next Wednesday. Yeah, there they go. We got another Eliminator match with Willow and Statlander Nick on Wednesday. That's going to be a little bit of insane here, but... Looks like we're going to get 20 minutes of... Uh, 20 minutes of a main event here for Battle of the Belts here tonight, so... All in all tonight, I have to say a pretty decent show over overall as we get to our main event here. It'll depend on what happens here during the main event, of course, with the final sort of final feel of the night's going to be like. But once again, everybody, while well, I got a split second here, thank you for stopping by here. Whether you're checking this out live, whether you're checking out VOD, whether you're checking out on the YouTube, YouTube will probably be up around midnight Eastern. Right after I'm done here, I just have to copy it, edit, re, I reformat it out to get rid of the uh, fluff on the front end and a little bit off the back end. But um, yeah, it looks like uh, next Saturday we're going to be up and free here the, since Collision is going to be running at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Unfortunately, I'm not home from work until 6, so I'm definitely going to miss the first half of it, so... Um, we'll just have to just take a pass on uh, stream next week. We're still going to do two uh, two episodes of uh, WWE 2K24 on Wednesday to make sure we stay in line there because did the math. Uh, if we keep going two a week, we're going to finish up right at the end of September. So from there, we can take a little bit of a break once again. And then... Uh, We'll, we'll see what happens with the TV deal as it comes down. But yeah, um, once again, everybody, thank you for stopping by here. Uh, next time I'm going to be on is tomorrow night with uh, MLB The Show. Got to figure out what we're going to do for in terms of a lineup and as well as uh, what we're going to do to accelerate some of the programs that we're on right now. Um, but yeah, enjoying this having some fun here three hours of wrestling can get to you after a while but as long as you're enjoying it that's what matters right Let's see what else we see. just wanted to see this one quick note here so um I don't know what's happening if this is actually true or not, but it looks like we might end up getting uh, we might end up getting Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom going forward here in the MCU. They were just showing that San Diego Cody Comic Con. Uh, favorite teams in sports? Well. I have been a Blue Jays fan just because of access. I was real, more of a Montreal Expos fan growing up. Uh, Buffalo Bills for uh, NFL. Hockey, I'm taking a step back right now because there's a few controversies in the league that I just... I'll go for good games. I won't worry about cheering for a favorite team at this point. Uh, NBA... Growing up, I was a fan of the Bulls and the Pacers because I was alive during the Jordan Reggie Miller era. One of my favorite moments ever is Reggie Miller scoring the 10 points in six seconds against the Knicks. I uh, try to be a fan of uh, try to be a fan of Team Canada, but with all the craziness going on. I don't know if you heard all the controversy that's going on with Team Canada and their Spygate uh, shenanigans with the soccer team. Gotta love having Dustin Rhodes come out at home.
They actually got Kevin Von Eric to come out tonight. All right, well, if you're going to be in Texas, might as well unload on everything. There, There is no way that they don't give the three... The six-man titles to the Von Eriks here tonight. They have to. Like. Signing autographs coming out. Kissing babies. All that great stuff. It, it'll be fun to see how this one works out here. I will say this, uh, Dodger baseball, in terms of favorite teams, I am known as Mike the Ref, right? I I'm more of a fan of good games than I am of good teams. Especially in this world of free agency. A belt change? Impossible. Well, no, this won't be a belt change. This is literally a crowning of champions. Uh, the ROH six-man titles were a part of uh, the Bang Bang Gang's conglomeration. Oh, his headset's dead. But... Uh, yeah, they were part of the Bang Bang's conglomeration of titles. And this is a way that they got rid of, one, the scissor titles, and two, split the titles up again between ROH and AEW. And I think this works out very well. The fact that you can... Uh, oh, there's an interesting little... Uh, tidbit to this the Roderick Strong Grand Slam here but sorry quickly back to the point I had earlier uh, they can't have a belt change on this so a new champ sure yeah that's true Strong going after Kevin, of course. Uh, interesting that Paul White's been given the this uh, more on-screen authority figure for ROH. Originally, they were supposed to give that to Stokely, but Stokely's pretty much poo-poo, bye-bye. Now that he's working with Statlander. Um, but yeah, in terms of my favorite team, like even when it comes to wrestlers, I have a hard time picking a favorite wrestler. I'm more of a, I, I like good matches. I like good stories. I like, I, I like when people work out to their potential. Like, I know, I know personally, when I was refereeing volleyball, I wouldn't mind doing the lower level volleyball because I know they were giving all their effort. They may not be as skilled as some of the elite athletes, but you know the work efforts in there, and I appreciate two teams that are just working. Same thing with wrestling. Like, my favorite wrestling match to this point still is an indie match here in Edmonton. Uh, featuring now uh, part of uh, Reality Wrestling, uh, Gigi Ray, and local wrestler Zoe Sager here uh, for Love Wrestling here, the original first-time match here in Edmonton. I haven't seen two wrestlers work as well together, working hard to put each other over than those two did in that match. So yeah, for me, in terms of picking favorites, I'd rather I'd rather cheer for great matches than uh, cheer for a great player. 
It also helps that I'm very non-committal in everything I do these days. Sorry, I haven't used the sound effects much today because there really wasn't been much to talk about that way. You notice Shivani's calling him the AEW Ring of Honor six. I know they were talking about you know changing the brand name of ROH. I love the fact that Shivani already realizes that everybody watches it on DVR. I'll be, uh, I'll probably end up watching Collision after. Just because th they're doing something smart here. Because during the PLEs, we're always having a problem with, uh, like we were doing the double show last time, right? With Money in the Bank and that. And they ended up with like 200,000 people, and that's it. Which even for AEW is, even for Collision, it's not a great number. If they do it as a pre-show, that actually might help out a fair bit. If you could put a, put a very nice card up on Wednesday. Which we'll get to hear about sometime by Thursday, because that's when they got to do the show. Because I know typically, here's one thing I want to see, and this is where I'm worried about the pettiness of WWE. Does WWE book shows for the pre-show now for SummerSlam? Even though they're going to run for four hours plus, do they put a show, put a match on the pre-show now? Because if that's what they do. Well, Dust is dead. This is the same story they did last night with the uh, with the Dark Order versus uh, the Von Erichs and uh, Rhodes. It's rubberized rug. He will. He'll get his hot tag at the end. We got still about 10 minutes left here. That One thing I do know is this this show, they don't, uh, they don't typically work overtime. Hot tag to Ross. I love it. Let's just get going here. Not interested in WWE pre-show anyway. Sorry, WWE. I might as well watch. Might as well regularly watch main event then. Yeah, like. But here's the thing. What if, what if they put the SmackDown tag titles on the pre-show? So Johnny Gargano can get his uh, get his spot against the entire crowd. I know that they. They scheduled that match for SmackDown, but what if they switch it up and do it on the pre-show now? I think this is a lot of the reason why AEW doesn't announce a lot of their matches till close to. And they didn't make the announcement about the, uh, the time change for Collision until last minute either, just to see if they can get some extra viewers, right? So... So that pile driver and all that happened during the commercial break. Yeah. 
Nice little two count there as everything's set up here. Um, you gotta love how Kevin, Kevin shows more emotion than a lot of people, so. But no, I I get exactly what you're saying there. Like, I, I, I appreciate how... Like, when, when they have a four-hour-plus pay-per-view, I don't think you need a pre-show. I, I still say the same thing. Not interested in seeing DIY losing, although I understand the storyline. I'm with you. Like, Gargano deserves better. Especially at home. Because we're already going to have one home to hometown guy probably lose a title with Logan Paul losing to LA Knight. I, I do have a feeling that's what's going to happen on the show, but... A little impromptu sling blade. It looks like Ross is a little out of it there for a little bit. Oh, now that he's made it to the rig ropes, he automatically gets a refresh. Yeah, this is literally the same thing they did last night against the Dark Order. Now we just have to see if they're going to make a little bit of a difference here in terms of the finish. Nice little atomic drop out of nowhere. Oh God, here we go. I love how he just incorporated the Destroyer into his list of moves. For those that don't know, the Destroyer is basically, uh, basically on the guy that takes it. And that's why he's not going to get the cover. Now here comes Chaos. Aubrey, you got fooled with this last night. Don't get fooled again. <laughs> Atta boy, Nigel. Yeah, where is Maria tonight? Oh, God. Did he eat a spine buster there? That had to hurt. Right on the knees. Nice shot. Gotta love the save by the... All right. I... I Kevin hasn't been involved yet. That's the funny part about this. You would think Kevin would get involved, but it's one thing I appreciate about our about AEW in general. They won't do the like you were talking about cut, cookie cutter earlier. AEW is trying to break a lot of those tropes. That's how they won the tag match last night. <laughs> Dustin's not going to get knocked out with his own cowbell. Come on now. Oh, 
Oh, now we're going for chairs. Uh-oh. Couldn't get the claw because he was too sweaty. Oh, and there's the lariat. Curtain call. There it is. Of course you're going to give it to the hometown boy. Hey, JPJ, how you doing? How you, you get a chance to watch the show tonight? I, I love the fact that the Von Eriks win the, uh, the ROA six, man. I don't even care if they only get it for a couple weeks here. The Von Eriks are all elite, not necessarily. I don't know if, I don't know if the graphics come up on socials yet, but. But you can, with the fact that they're running Texas for the three weeks, you could run the Von Eriks for a couple of weeks with the R the ROH trios titles. Then uh, they could drop them right before they leave Texas. The Von Eriks would be great for ROH. Like you look at the MXM collection, you look at the Von Eriks showing up, Dustin being down there, along with Paul White now being down there. They were talking about an increased focus on ROH, and this is definitely a way to do it. Having a lot of these, not only just the veterans, but also um, a lot of brand names coming down there. It just, I, I think it's a great, it's a great thing to have. I don't know if they're officially signed. I'd love to see it. I, I think it would be a great coup to have them. Jay Lethal will be happy, yeah. Bring bring Lethal down here since Jeff Jarrett's basically gone babyface. And now that uh, Briscoe beat uh, Strong, he's going to need somebody to fight with. And I think Jay would be a great opponent to have go forward if you're not going to move somebody up to that level. Literally, TSN has kicked me out three times tonight so i don't know if anything else is going on right now i doubt it all right yeah they're just wrapping up so not a big deal here but all right well that being said that put that on mute and we'll leave that there no uh yeah, I'm very happy. I was talking about him about ROH getting involved in all this crossover stuff before TK purchased ROH. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think ROH had a lot of plans, but nobody ran those plans by Sinclair. And Sinclair just didn't want to spend any more money on the product. And uh, unfortunately, it just became a cash issue that Sinclair didn't want to spend the money and Tony Khan decided he wanted to keep it. That little extra bundle of having all the original all in as an ROH property was just an extra incentive for in order for him to keep that going and have that available like that. But I think, I think ROH while I, I still feel, and yes, I will, t I will, I will see your need to see slam anniversary. I will still say that last night's death before dishonor show may have been the best PLE I have seen this year. So I do need to check out slam anniversary. I understand that that was next level as well. TNA helped keep ROH alive for a little bit. Absolutely. On multiple occasions. Not just having talent come over and work. 
and not just uh, that time early on where, you know, ROH basically helped TNA get established until TNA decided that it didn't want its wrestlers going over anybody that was going to get any prominence in TNA was not allowed to work ROH. And that started that little bit of skullduggery there that that carny stuff, I think is the best way to put it. But uh, yeah, like in ter- in terms of ring of honor, there's been many different ways that it's been able to stay alive, whether it's been through Sinclair, whether it's been through other means, whether Tony Khan, I, I honestly do feel has the best interests at heart when it comes to ROH. I think he's just seeing that, you know, as much as this might be his essential booking, I think he's going to start putting a lot more people on the ground in there to give them more help. Cause it more, it, it seems like it's always been just a throwaway brand that they're going to do extra matches on. I honestly feel now that everything has gone the way that it has here, you're going to see a lot more, I don't know if segregation is it, but I think Anthem was probably trying to make it. Well, if Anthem could have got it on pennies on the dollar, I'm sure that they would have been able to get it. But TK actually valued the product a little bit more than Anthem did. And I I think that Anthem was looking more so for the roster than they were for the tape library and everything at, at all. So they probably just didn't offer as much. TK wanted the whole thing. So I think that's why he picked it up more than anything else. He values the product and he wanted the product to continue going. Because after that one WrestleMania weekend, I don't think they really knew what they were going to do. But I have to say all in all tonight, like we had an absolute fantastic show for the most part here. I don't think, I don't think there were any real hiccups tonight. Um, Taya and, uh, Tony Storm was a great match. Tony's promo after was absolute. Tony's promo after the match was exactly what we needed after what Mariah said after her match. I, I think that was pretty spectacular. The, uh, Deanna, Deanna Willow match. I think it served the purpose of being a good match. I don't think it was anything bad about it. Uh, It basically helped forward a little bit of the feud between Thunder Rosa and Deanna Taya in there. The main event was absolutely great. The fact that you're getting the hometown boys to win the titles in what I would consider being a very fun but yet straightforward match. I think it was absolutely a fun time. And then on Collision, you know, you get uh, Leo Rush and Pac main eventing once again. And Pac getting a... Pac eventually getting the win, but Leo Rush getting a definite statement there. You're also getting MXM Collection getting... Looking a lot... Well, they actually look like a team. And this is the first time they've been on mainstream TV since... uh, Since getting fired from WWE. This is their first mainstream match. They had a one, I believe it was on the pre-show of uh, Death Before Dishonor yesterday. But other than that, and they had the same, they basically had the same effect here that the inspiration did in TNA or an impact at the time where Billy Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, now that they actually get to change back to their real names, and actually look like a real tag team. That's what Monsur and Mason were looking like tonight. They actually look like a legit team. And just everything looked great. The uh, the three-way tag match. Wheeler Yuta getting his win back after uh, losing the Pure Championship uh, last night to Lee Moriarty. Uh, that uh, looks like it might be setting up something to reestablish uh, Wheeler in a different direction here as well. Hologram and the Beast Mortos. That was a fun match. The fact that Hologram's been able to work two people that he's very familiar with to get him get his foot in the door, get himself established, 
get himself looking like he's going to be a a top wrestler going forward i think uh i think it's going to do well like the beast mortos has already in a way been made i think holograms on a very steep curve to being made if he can continue at the pace that he's still going here um thunder rosa well thunder rosa just showing her more aggressive side tonight in that uh in the match with my world actually turned out really well if you ask me and then yeah that um well the conglomeration versus the pure athletes pretty much way it meant the way that we expected it to with the, the conglomeration getting the victory the pure athletes getting a little bit more in than i thought they would but they end up getting that uh they win. and then orange Cassidy, johnny tv Johnny TV always doing the flipping and dipping and making himself look good. And then having Orange Cassidy come out and win with that orange punch right at the end. All in all, another great night of wrestling. Once again, like we, we were talking about it off the top of the show here. The star power, it seems like the star power isn't there as prevalent as it is on dynamite there is star power there like you're looking at ftr you're looking at willow you're looking at a dustin Rhodes, orange cassidy but wrestler one to wrestler 20 is not not a household name but it's still providing an a-plus show making these people become household names and I think if you keep on with this consistency, I I honestly feel the collision is going to be must-see TV. 